today the string built-in function in Python 3. So let's start with a look at the docs. String has two ways to use it. The first where you pass an object, and the second one where you pass a bytes-like object, which is either bytes or byte array. With these bytes-like objects, we have various encodings and error options available to us. The general idea is that for is that normally you can just wrap anything in a string if you want to, any object. And then when it comes to bytes like objects, what we're doing is basically decoding bytes and converting bytes to strings and converting strings to bytes, things like that. We can start by looking at the first way to use a string function. And you could wrap it around a number or a dictionary or a list, and it's returning a string. And we could check that by assigning our list to a variable. We can check on A and check the type of it and see that it's returning class string. So I think most developers, Python developers, have seen this before, um, using the string function to wrap it around any object and turn that object into a string. Next, let's look at using the string function uh, with all three arguments of object encoding and errors. So if we took that first example of an int and we wanted to encode that with ASCII or something, well, that's not going to be possible because it says we need a bytes-like object. So to test this out, I have created a bytes-like object and it's the word code, but what's different about it is that letter O is a non-ASCII character uh, with that double dotted O thing. And in any case, uh, we have a bytes like object and we can check that it's class bytes and what we can do is we can pass x to the string function and make that encoding equal to ASCII. The only issue here is that we do have a small error and that's where the third argument of errors will come in handy and we can ignore that and when we return this You'll notice that that O with the dots over it has disappeared and what's been returned is CDE. Um, so basically we ignored that character that was unable to be converted and we continued converting anyway. So you basically have the option. Um, you could do it without ignoring the errors and make sure you're catching those. Or if it's not as important to you, whatever the case may be, you can specify how you want to handle those errors. Now. If we were, instead of using ASCII, um, ASCII encoding, we were to use UTF-8, then we'd have no problems at all because that uh, letter O thing is acceptable within UTF-8. All right, let's run this back one more time so we're comfortable with it. Um, so here's another bytes-like object in this case. Um, it's the, the word for Canada in Chinese. And then what we're going to do is wrap string around that and specify our encoding as UTF-8. And we've converted that back from a bytes-like object to a string. So before, where x was of type bytes, now uh, if we assign that to say y equals, then when we check type of y, we get a string. So we're converting from bytes to strings. All right, I think that is pretty much it. So I will use a bytes-like object to say thanks for watching.